as we've been working on this project, posting videos and putting stuff out on different social media, we've gotten a lot of questions about what we're doing with all the wood that we've got. And you can see we've got stuff sorted and organized into different piles. The plan is to send a bunch of this stuff to the sawmill and so we've got it sorted into into different piles into different lengths to go to different locations the plan for most of this is to go to the sawmills although we've got a lot of it that's going to go to firewood and i'll take you over and show you that pile but that stuff is going to go to some local church groups and they'll use that to send out to less fortunate or to those that might be in need we're going to give that away to charity um, and hopefully that firewood will end up at a good home where it's needed. And that's going to be the stuff that's either the wrong species or the wrong size to go to the sawmill. These larger, larger trees behind me, they're going to go to the sawmill. We've probably got a couple of loads, two or three, they're going to go to different sawmills. This pile behind me, as you can see, is a lot smaller. This is the stuff that will go to firewood. It's going to end up hopefully at some little old lady's house warming her front room next winter and there's quite a bit of this stuff that we've taken off the property we've limbed it and it's going to make great firewood especially if it dries out through the summer we'll get it delivered and then they can cut it up split it and do whatever they're going to do with it these bigger trees here that are the larger diameter they're still pretty long most of these we cut to 33 foot long this is the stuff that will end up going to the mill it's good size the mill will take these logs it'd be perfect to put a couple of loads together and send this up to the local sawmill a lot of people have asked hey why don't you buy a sawmill why don't you cut your own boards the cost of lumber is so expensive right now why are you sending it off to the mill well Right now, the mill is paying a lot of money. Certainly not, well, not a lot of money. More money than they have been paying. Right now is a good time to send a load of trees or several loads of trees up to the mill. The idea that seems to be out there is that, hey, I'm gonna buy a sawmill and I'm gonna cut my own boards and then I'm gonna build my own house. And it's very romantic. But the reality of that is the amount of time, effort, and energy and equipment it would take to turn these boards into proper lumber to build a house that's going to stand the test of time is huge. I don't think that people put a value on their own time. They're happy to throw away their time trying to chase what might end up being a few dollars. And so my advice to people is always, yes, if you have trees, maybe bring in a mobile sawmiller, give them half, you keep half, and then use that lumber in your house as trim. In other words, go buy all the sticks and bricks you need to build the frame of that house. Think of it as the skeletal structure of the home. But then inside of that, if you want post and beam decorative archways between the kitchen and the living room, or if you want wood trim in places, then great, cut that, make it, install it in your house. That way, if it dries, if it twists, if it warps, it's replaceable. But I would much rather see somebody go and spend the money on lumber that's been run through a kiln, that's been cut to laser precision, that makes it easy to build a house that's going to last, that isn't going to have some of the issues that natural materials like this that hasn't gone through some of that process is going to deal with. So that's what's driving some of the decisions when we say, hey, this is going to the firewood pile and this is going to the sawmill. Even though I've got a house that I need to build for myself and my wife sees all of these piles of wood and she's like, there's our house right there. With a, yes, sort of. Um, there'll certainly be some mantles and maybe some trim pieces and some seals, window seals and those types of things. Maybe even a tongue and groove ceiling in one room or in the office, who knows, there's options. But certainly none of the structural elements are going to get built out of this lumber behind me unless it goes to the mill, goes through their cutting process, goes through their kiln, gets stamped certified, ends up down at Home Depot, and then I buy it off the shelf. One of the things that we hear a lot is, why don't you get a firewood processor and process all of this and then sell the firewood? 
And yes, that might be an option, but we are set up to do work as an excavation company. That's what that's our primary thing is earthwork. I have plenty of jobs to do and plenty of things that projects that we could be working on. And we're not set up, we're not tooled up for firewood processing. If that was our business and if that's what we did for a living was made firewood or or we made wood chips that we sold or if if that was how we made a living then that would make sense but that's just not the business that we're in we're in the business of building roads and clearing land and putting in septic systems syst systems <laughs> septic systems we're just not tooled up ready to go to make firewood most of this stuff is better to go to somebody else who can do that either that has the time available or has the tools for that You're, you want to go yeah all right, head on up to the truck. You want the keys? Yeah. You want me to give you the keys? Yeah. Okay, you want the keys to the truck? Yeah. Are you driving home? No. Who's going to drive home? What if I give you the key to the excavator? You want no. the key to the excavator? No. no, you don't want the key to the excavator. No. Okay. The truck. You want the key to the truck? Yeah. Do you want me to drive or do you want to drive? The truck. Do you want, this is the truck key. Do you want to drive? You want me you to drive. drive. Okay, you take the key to the truck and then I'll drive home. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, here you go. Okay, I'll see you at the truck. See you in a minute. One of the long standing arguments that we have, well, I don't know, arguments. One of the long standing conversations between myself and a lot of the su subscribers down in the in the comments on the channel is why is it that we don't chip all of this wood why do we burn so much slash and there seems to be this opinion that that if you just run it through a chipper that you're you're turning trash into cash and suddenly these chips are worth lots and lots of money in other parts of the country where trees don't grow like weeds like they do around here I think maybe there might be some truth to that. If I was in Southern California and I had heard the legend of a 60 foot tree and I needed some wood chips for my garden, there would be some real value to trees and wood chips. But for us around here where we just deal with slash all the time and it is readily available. Every time we get a windstorm, more trees are down, there's more slash to clean up. And it seems to be this ongoing problem as we're, we're clearing ground and opening things up, whether it's for new homes or for open spaces or for roads, we're just constantly dealing with what seems to be this ongoing problem of what do we do with the slash? How do we get rid of the stumps? How do we get rid of the branches? What do we do with kind of the, the leftover pieces from the tree? Whether, whether we send that tree to the mill or it goes to firewood, there's always slash debris stumps that have to be dealt with oh, that small organic stuff that seems to always be a problem and everybody says hey just throw in the wood chipper go rent a wood chipper and throw in the wood chipper and you'll make some wood chips and that'll be really great and mother earth will be so happy and it'll just be wonderful for everybody except for it requires a lot of labor it's a lot of extra effort and a lot of additional time equipment diesel fuel man hours to deal with getting a chipper in there getting that material chipped and then handling those chips it is much easier to consolidate the slash to a single location light that fire and and reduce all of that slash down to nothing Yes, you're left with some stumps and the ash and whatever, and a lot of that just gets spread out. I'm not sure how to how to explain that. I, I've had that conversation in the comments quite a few times about wood chips and why is it that we don't cut up everything or, or grind everything up and turn it into wood chips and then spread it out. And and the reality is is that it's just not cost effective. And so typically my response is Hey, listen, you get out your checkbook and I'll do whatever you want. But most people don't want to get out their checkbook, but they're certainly happy to watch me waste time and money making wood chips that really don't have a value for most people in this neck of the woods.